Hello, Shamel Pitts. Uh, tell me about your name. Hmm. Shamel, that's an unusual name, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Shema has roots, has Arabic roots, actually. And mm -hmm. also uh, Hebrew roots in terms of language. Mm -hmm. So Sham El is there as God in Hebrew, or Shem El is the name is mm -hmm. God. And I think in Arabic, Sham El Shamal is the north wind, or it means all encompassing. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yes, quite a direction for one's life, huh? <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, so in terms of the piece, uh, which is called a touch of red, correct? Correct. Could you just, just dive in and uh, I was going to ask you, should I ask you about the title or should I ask you about the central image? And when we, one of our first uh, conversations, you were talking about, I know these are my words, the implicit tension in men in competitive situations, mm -hmm. that there is at once, there's, there's several things going on, one of which is, well, you tell me, what, what is the central image in, the, the, in your metaphor? Yeah, actually touch of red, red uh, is coming from not only the color, but it's also my name actually. Growing up, my family and friends from Brooklyn didn't call me Shamel, by my, they didn't call me by my first name, they called me by my nickname, which was red. And it still is red till this day. So something about creating this new series, Red Series, is connecting to my childlike identity or childlike wonders, um, lightness, mm -hmm. um, roots. So that is also maybe not a central theme of, of Touch of Red, but it is something that is a part of its offering. Touch of Red is a duet between two men of color and has a lot to do with the allowance of ourselves to soften and the power within that vulnerability and the spectrum in which can exist with those qualities of softness and vulnerability. Um, and I look towards a lot. Now, what, what can exist with the, what can exist? Different, the qualities and spectrum of softness mm -hmm. and vulnerability. Give me, a, give me an idea, well, give me a, a more specific, what qualities? Uh... <laughs> well, soft, if you make a tight fist, this is hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can soften that fist and it becomes soft, but it still has the same form. Mm. So a lot of times, softness and vulnerability are connected to a form that represents something like weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feminacy, which are all sort of negative connotations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I was, I guess I'm more interested with Touch of Red in bringing out the qualities of softness and vulnerability and having that be, be met with a large range of possibilities, such as lightness, speed, footwork, um, combativeness, combativeness yeah, combat mm -hmm. without a sense of winning or losing, um, and and also this sense of a match between two men that can exist without violence, um, without a need to win or lose, um, but that can offer itself to sort of space of enhancement and. So, so just just for a minute though. Uh... So this sounds like you told us some very important things that I was going to resist in the in uh, the interview because it says too much about my preoccupations. So it is important that there's two black men or men of color, right? It, it, that's very important. It is what it is. Well, is it important or not? Could it be two white guys? Oh, it's coming from my, the, the work is created with me and Tashrik Fredericks. And the casting of the work is what makes the work. Okay, that's okay. No, I understand. So, you know, I know something about identity and how it's in its central position 
in what the artist does. Mm -hmm. I come from a tradition that taught me that there was such a, so some, what was liberating about dance was that it was universal. Totally. It didn't need, this is all the stuff they fed us, right? It didn't need language. It didn't need anything except two bodies. And then the audience would do the rest. Okay, but it, you're, for you, that's, and I understand it's very important that it be two men of color. And now um, the idea that uh, these two men, when I were looking at, um, at the piece, the audience walks in and two men are, uh, dressed in uh, uh, athletic gear. It also looks like it could be something uh, gay men would wear in a club, right? Mm -hmm. And they are uh, dancing as if it could be, as if they were in a club. Mm -hmm. And then it evolves into something that looks like it's more like what you're describing, which is about a kind of combat. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that so it, it isn't only about that. what I did what I took away from the piece it wasn't only about tenderness but there was something about the oscillation mm. between aggression and mm. the opposite you want to mm. talk about that yeah I think the tension between dualities is also is always of interest and curiosity to me um, the other performer in Touch of Red is Tashrik Fredericks whose birthday mm. is today mm -hmm. He's 28 today um, Tashrik and I have a very powerful, unparalleled, complex partnership. And most of what comes out through that complexity is when him and I find ourselves dancing together at night in various cities and clubs around the world, um, dark spaces, lots of music, lots of sound, lots of lights. We find ourselves in the middle of the floor and nothing else exists. And what exists nothing else exists beyond our connection and what i gain from that connection is a whole plethora of possibilities in which i can relate to someone um it he becomes my younger brother he becomes my parent we become lovers we become ancestral bodied beings we become connected to our ancestors anyway it's very layered and that was not only stimulating to me, it also created a lot of curiosity towards mm -hmm. how men can relate to each other um, with, with qualities of relating that I have yet to been able to describe or experience. So tell me then, um, uh, a cisgendered um, white woman, white man, there's something for them to take away from this piece. Yeah. Which might be, what, what, you, what, I think you might've just said it, but I'm, I'm sort of, I just want to hear you articulate it a little bit more because you're saying at once that it is full of possibilities, but it seems quite specific. Yeah. Literally it's, it's biographical. It's about your personal relationship with the other performer. And we are invited to come in and observe this, this ritual. What mm -hmm. is in it for the observer? Mm -hmm. A lot of the initial I, interest in this work came from boxing, because whenever I would come home to New York, I would see boxing on TV. And I never really understood the appeal or entertainment value of people watching two men, especially two men of color, get mm -hmm. into a fight with each other and beat the crap out of each other. Um, mm -hmm. And instead of looking away from that, I started to look towards it and started to enjoy these blurred moments where the two men are potentially embracing each other rather than just wrestling, the kind of leaning into and onto each other, sort of also consoling each other. Um, and those blurred moments offered me someone who, you know, is not a boxer, um, nor interested in watching it as an audience member, it I felt a way in. So I think with Touch of Red as well, beyond the two of us who are performing the work, I think what it can offer is um, the sharing, the universal sharing towards our complex humanity, that there are qualities inside of this work that are 
sort of rendering our ability to be multiple, to embody, mm-hmm. to embody multiplicity. Well, I just want, I, 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 I hear you, I, I hear you. Allowing a bit more space, gonna... sorry. I wanna, and also allowing a bit more space um, to, uh, allowing a bit more space for us to have many different qualities as that, that we encompass as people. And I think that maybe people can connect to that part too, the sense of tenderness and feeling that there's a space created beyond what might have been cut off prior. I understand. So uh, in other words, it's uh, a friend who uh, runs the Hannah Arendt Center at, at Bard mm-hmm. and he is uh, doing a uh, seminar on friendship in May, and uh, and until you, I, I hadn't thought that this is a portrait of friendship, mm. uh, because it felt to me. Well, I don't know if it felt to me. I was wondering. I want to ask you: Is it a universal picture of a relationship, or is it about a specific relationship? In other mm. words, there are times when the two of you. Uh, seem uh, uh, disaffected, move away from each other. Someone is lying in the middle of the stage. The other person is at once uh, protecting them or looking for them. There is this constant uh, approach and tangling and getting entangled and then bursting apart. There's coming at, back at each other. Uh, well, maybe maybe it's a, it's. There seem to have been meaning in that. And you're saying that this represents for you the various uh, modalities of self. Hmm. That, 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 well, that's what you were saying, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. That, Thank you for that articulation. That, yeah, that's the, that's the promise of the piece for hmm. someone who, want, yeah, who wants to, to see that. Hmm. Uh-huh. You know, I was thinking about, a, 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 how do you describe yourself? What is what? How do what's your descriptions of yourself? Are you a choreographer or a director, dancer? What are you? Oh, I'm a dancer, but maybe before that I'm human, and maybe after that artist. And 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 I don't like really to use titles for myself though. But so so there's that. I describe myself as someone who doesn't like to describe themselves. <laughs> no, I swear that's 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 yeah. clever. That's clever. Except that I'm here to, to get you to use words. That's yeah. why we're talking. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. when you know you've heard Martha yeah. Graham, people say to Martha Graham, "What does it mean?" She said, "If I knew what it meant, darling, I wouldn't have to dance about it." Okay. You know. You no. know. So, no. But, but obviously, there's something you're participating in here, which is no. intellectual exercise about. No. Uh, let's let's talk about how your vocabulary is created. Yeah. How do you, how do you start the piece, and how do you find vocabulary? Yeah, so a lot of the initial movement came from my investigation in boxing and the mm-hmm. boxing, this fast, complex sort of footwork technique that amazing boxers like Muhammad Ali have. You know, this and their qualities within this fast, quickness footwork, such as float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Mm-hmm. A lot of people mm-hmm. say Muhammad Ali is a great dancer, um, but and that dancer is in partnership with another dancer. Um, but from looking at the quick, quick footwork of boxing, I then it then led me to Lindy Hop, you know, which is an African American dance style um, of partners, um, sort of born from swing dance, jazz dance. And I was really amazed too by the quickness and speed and the listening to the two performers' bodies next to each other. So I went a lot into researching those styles, not to copy them or appropriate them, but to learn a little bit about this duet, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, at my core, am based in the movement language of Gaga, which is created by Israeli choreographer Ohad Naharin, who's the former artistic director of Batsheva Dance Company, where I danced mm-hmm. for seven years in Tel Aviv, Israel. And Gaga leaves, lends, or sort of allows a lot of space for research and movement that deals with softness, uh, letting go, 
um, and how you can be soft and explosive both at the same time. Um, delicacy as a sort of virtue, lightness as a virtue, um, our ability to make fun of ourselves, to not take ourselves too seriously, even as we do something intentionally, um, has a lot to do with listening to the different qualities, not only listening, but activating, igniting the different qualities of the body, such as the flesh, getting the muscles to ignite and grab or let go, allowing the bones to move inside of the flesh. I mean, there's a lot in Gaga that leaves, that gives me room to find my movement voice and vocabulary. When you came to the rehearsal, did you come to your rehearsal with uh, prepared materials or did it all come out of um, improvisation? A lot of this work I started creating during the pandemic. Actually, Touch of Red is something I thought about for a really long time already. Um, mm -hmm. It starts from a thought and the concept. And then during the pandemic, when we were all sort of isolated, I reached out to, I started thinking about creating Touch of Red even more because something that was missing for me strongly during that time was touch. Uh, we weren't allowed to be amongst others. And as a dancer, you know, very tactile, I sort of missed that. So while I was alone during the pandemic, I reached out to a musician that I worked with a lot. Uh, his name is Sivan Jakobovitz. And I was sharing some ideas about Touch of Red, similar to what I just shared with you, you know, in terms of quickness and nightlife and footwork and partnership. Um, and he sent over a track that was about eight minutes. And I just danced to it a lot and sent him videos. And that became the initial movement research for Touch of Red. From there, at the end of the summer, September 2020, after two years, uh, or after a year at that time, I, with my arts collective tribe, were able to enter a theater to begin our first residency for Touch of Red after being out of a theater and out of touch with each other for so long. And that theater was New York Live Arts. And oh, that's it, wonderful. Yeah, we were very glad that you were there. It was a, it's a very, it was a benediction of sorts. So, yeah. uh, so let's talk about, uh, you guys have been traveling, you've been touring. There's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of good things happening for, you say, are you the director, the artistic yeah. director of Tribe, or are you just one of the tribal members? I'm the artistic director of Tribe. So what's going on with your group? How is it, how is it moving? It's, we're going, things are going, oh, going along splendidly, wonderfully. Mm -hmm. It's very intense, and I'd love to talk to you more offline about that too. Like, how to how how has your experience been as an artistic director? Um, but what has been going on is that we just came from tour to LA, where we performed "Touch of Red" at Cap UCLA. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an incredible experience with all of our collaborators in attendance and full perform full uh, audiences for both of the performances actually to go back a little bit about your question in terms of what the audience gets from it gains from it um i am so curious by not knowing that in its totality and also curious to, about the re the agency of the audience to further answer that question for each other when we were in mm -hmm. Miami the audience shift from night to night was so impressive that by the final performance, it was an incredibly diverse audience of many different types of people, many different ages, many different ethnicities, mm -hmm. many different mm -hmm. qualities. And, and I was sort of curious about how that happened and spoke to some of the audience members afterwards. And they said, well, a friend of mine came to the performance yesterday and said, this work is for you. And you need to see it. And then another person said, my wife came yesterday and said that this work is for you. You need to see it. It moved me in such a, you know. So I think that the I'm also always interested in the relationship between the performers and the audience. Mm -hmm. and, and the agency that we both have towards being in this match together. Mm -hmm. So in, uh, in, in your description, you said you started with human. Uh, are you a gay a choreographer? I'm, I am gay, yes. Okay, but do, for me, I thought I saw um, 
something that many young gay men would recognize. Hmm. You're having developed feelings about a whole culture that you were never allowed into, where you were the softness that they were, everybody in that culture was pointing at and saying not to be. Yeah. And now, years later, you have found your, found your power, found your voice, and now you're drawing that you're uh, making a portrait of that world from your point of view, which is a very specific point of view. Uh, yeah. and, and that, that is, it, this is how a gay man understands uh, aggression and intimacy and relationships. Uh, yeah. Do you reject that? It's not, it's not, I reject that it's not only a gay man, that it's about the spectrum of what maleness is, period. Um, there's this artist named Tatiana Vaslazlizade, who does a lot of murals. And in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, bed there's this beautiful mural of a Black man with very soft, almost watery eyes. And it says, and he has a huge flower next to him. And you can tell he's a bit, let's say, from the hood. Um, but the, the text next to this mural says, let Black men be soft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this has been in my neighborhood for a very long time. When I came back home to see this mural, it was defaced. People from the neighborhood whitewashed, you know, white painted over it. And then people started to write other texts over it, like let black men be strong. Let black men be rulers of their neighborhoods, leaders of their neighborhoods. If black men are soft, they will be uh, preyed upon, you know. So. I say, I say this, I give you this example in this story just to say that it's, yes, my personal story as a gay man, Black man, um, but it's also a community response uh, that in, you know, it's also my response to a community response, such as what I just described from the, the mural to facing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I say that uh, your story is moving, but it also makes me very sad. Totally. Because some of some of us have been doing this for now 40 years. Mm -hmm. with the same at, and, but you, you come into a world where I thought that we would have done that work. Mm -hmm. and that, and, but you, you, you really are still, quote, dukes up. And, yeah. you're going to, you're, and you still have something to fight for. And mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think you have to back down. Yeah. I don't think you have to. Uh, back down at all. As a matter of fact, I think uh, for years, I didn't want to be called a Black choreographer. Mm -hmm. I said to if, to let them call me a Black choreographer, put me in a ghetto. Mm -hmm. I now understand that differently. Maybe mm -hmm. it's because I have a body of work. Maybe it's because I'm older. But I say to hell with that. I can be all of that and still Black. And as a matter of fact, that's what James Baldwin was about. That's what um, many of our uh, our gay leaders were about is that we don't have to apologize. And as a matter of fact, let the young kids out there who are not sure uh, st stand and be proud. That's a gay man that made that. Mm -hmm. You know, it does not mean. And because I think you're you, I feel like you're haunted by the universal thing as well. That to to really be a good artist, you've got to be able to be universal. I'm not even sure if that's true anymore. You, have, you can have your own audience. Yeah. You know, and your audience comes there because you are fierce, because mm. you embrace that which is marginalized in yourself, you know? Now, no preaching here, but just to say, I've enjoyed the conversation as what we said when we first talked. I said, I was so glad to see you, to see you coming, you know, to see you coming into this world. And uh, hopefully, to know that you would be free of chains that I didn't, I was not free of. And that's what I think I'm seeing in, in a touch of red. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you, would you like an audience to uh, be prepared for? Uh, yeah. Not prepared for, what would you, how should they come to this piece? Yeah. The journey towards the piece, during the piece and after the piece is let's say unconventional. Um, I think to come towards it with an openness towards the ride um, 
would be suggested. Um, I'm also, I say that this experience with the audience is a social experiment. I'm really curious as to the agency of audiences and to know that the work takes place in the round, which means the audience is on all four sides with the performance ring in the center. So it has this sense of uh, gathering together like a campfire where it's heated in the middle and depending on your proximity, it intensifies or cools down. But the fact that we're all two on the same level with each other mm -hmm. is how um, it's good to know that, that that we're in this moment together, um, and that is both horizontal and somehow circular. Mm. So they should come uh, prepared to be part of a communal experience. Yeah, exactly. And do you do the uh, PPT every night? Yeah. Do you talk about the piece every night? Because I've, I've seen alert. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, we do. It, yeah. Oh, that's a surprise. People don't know you're going to do it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You know, the reason we do tell people up front is so if they've got dinner plans, mm. they might know that they should maybe think differently about as soon as the, you finish, they're running out the door. The, you know? Oh yeah, the the work is one hour and one second, um, and it's because it's you know one hundred one is a lesson, and the lesson mm -hmm. falls is in vulnerability researching this, but for the audience, the you know that so it's one hundred one with the ten rounds. Each of the sections of touch of red is called a round. Um, minus, we have two breaks, and we have the bows. So what we're talking about now, I think, Bill, is this moment of the bows and the work, and including this part it's going to be a total of one hour and maybe 10 minutes each night yes i'm not quite sure uh so i know you said spoiler alert but I, i've done it now so in other words every night if people stay with you they will get a chance to actually talk with you and truly um interact with you they will be able, they'll, they'll is that true is that part of what you're promising every night yeah Okay, that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's actually what we call the bows. This you when you're sitting when you're sitting on the stools and talking to them, this is all part of the bows. Yeah, it's our bows. Yeah, we're not bowing because this is also something that we're that's not a part of this world, right? That's why I was saying we're on the same level. Bowing to be, was is because of this hierarchical um, traditions of performers to aristocrats and. I was questioning why do we still practice this when, when it's sort of an empty gesture and a bow is an act of gratitude and a generosity of thank you and you're welcome. So our bows being that we are with the audience seated on all four, you know, horizontally is a sort of exchange that we, the performers have with the audience using our words. And mm -hmm. this is the, Okay, well, language to be continued, to be okay. continued. Thank you so much, Mo. We're very pr pleased and proud to have you at New York Live Arts. And I look forward to seeing the piece in person as opposed to on video. Thank you All so much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.